So I've set up this video as a tutorial to show you how to make a wrap, a rock that is wrapped like this. Um, this is one of my favorite wraps to do on a rock and um, it takes a little bit of practice to get this particular weave, but um, a little bit of time, you'll be able to get this. So tools that you need, um, you need something to cut the caning with. I like to use just a pair of side um, clippers from jewelry making. You'll need some kind of a nail or an awl. Um, I have this one as well, sometimes I need two. You want a rock to wrap. Um, I find that rocks that are a little bit oval or oblong as opposed to ones that are perfectly round do a lot better for um, this particular style wrapping. And then you're gonna need caning. So I've soaked my caning here uh, for about 30 minutes. You don't wanna soak it for too much longer than 30 minutes to an hour. It'll start to get gray. Um, and once you pull it out, you are gonna to want to um, get it sort of straightened out so that it's not tangled. Um, so the caning comes in long strips and this strip is about two, three, it's probably about four yards long. And so it's a little bit more than what we need, but it's gonna do the job for us. So on the caning, there's two sides. Oh, let's see if I can focus that. There's two sides of the caning. One is kind of the back edge, which is flat and a little bit rough. The top edge is slightly rounded and smoother and often just a little darker. So if you dye your caning, which I do sometimes, you're gonna to wanna to have the rough edge up and out because that's the side that absorbs the dye. But if you're using undyed caning, I think it looks a little nicer with the rounded smooth side up. So we're gonna start with um, wrapping the rock a few times. I've got my rock here. You'll need to decide which is the front and which is the back of the rock. So for me, I like this side better, so this is going to be the front, and I'm gonna turn it over and start on the back of the rock. On the back of the rock, I'm going to flip the caning so that the rough side, the wrong side, is facing up. I'm gonna use my thumb, and I'm gonna make a 90 degree angle with the caning. And I'm kind of pinching that down with my thumb. I want this almost in the center, but slightly off center. I want it slightly, um, slightly to the right of off center. And I'm gonna wrap the caning around and I'm gonna hold this pretty tight. Um, I'm pulling this pretty taut and I'm gonna wrap it around and catch that little tail on the back. This tail is gonna stay there. Um, that's gonna be what helps to anchor these initial wraps. And so I'm gonna wrap it um, I'm gonna wrap it until the wrapping looks about centered. So I might be a little off center on this one, but that's okay. Sometimes there's a little bit of charm in having it so that it's not exact. All right, so I'm gonna do five wraps. When I get around and I'm coming around to do the sixth, this um, also I should mention, you wanna make sure that your caning isn't flipping. It's easy to twist the caning so that it twists and then you've got um, like the wrong side showing up. So you wanna to try to keep the caning so that it's all facing the same way. Um, all having the, the finished side, the rounded side facing outward. So I've got my fifth wrap there. I'm gonna come around to the back side and I'm gonna come on this side, but now I'm gonna make a little bit of a neck with this. I'm gonna twist it back up and around so that there's a loop here. And so I kinda of use when I twist this, let's see. I use my thumb as sort of an anchor to hold it. And if your other caning wraps start to come a little bit undone, you can just always push them back together. So I want this to be about centered, and I think I like it right there. So I'm gonna wrap this caning around the back, and it's coming back up to the front. Now here is where it can get um, a little bit hard. You are gonna need to find the other end of your caning, and you're going to slip it, um, let's see, you're gonna slip it through. So I'm putting this through there and then I'm gonna pull this end and I'm holding this tight with my thumb um, so that this wrap doesn't come undone and this loop isn't changed. So I'm holding kind of tight right there while I'm pulling this through. And when I get down to the end, you can see how I'm a little twisted there. So I'm gonna kind of back up. I'm gonna untwist the caning and I'm gonna to try to get it so that the caning is all unwrapped. So now I've got, I can kind of pull this tight 
I'm gonna squeeze these together. And you can see a little bit right there of the rough side of the caning that's sort of looking upward, but pretty much the top of the caning is going up and over, and then the top is back facing upward or facing outward again. So once you have this little neck, and you can adjust the or you can adjust this little loop a bit. So like if you found that this one was a little too long, you could kind of loosen this back up and feed a little bit of slack up or kind of cinch up some of the slack or give it a little bit more slack if you need it to be longer. Mine is pretty centered right there, so I'm pretty happy with it. Um, I'm gonna hold this tight. So I'm holding this fairly taut, um, probably a, lot, a little bit more tension than I would use in like crocheting, for instance. Um, I'm gonna kind of pull this and pull it real tight across the back. And so I'm rotating the rock as opposed to wrapping my hands around it. And when I come back on this side, I'm now going to follow this line. So at this point, it's just gonna be following the pattern. I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put my loose end up and through there, and then I'm gonna follow it around the back side. So, let me find my other end. Okay, I'm gonna take the end and I'm gonna go up through there and then pull this through. Uh, now my caning is looking a little fragile right there. I usually try to, um, there's gonna be times when the caning kind of breaks a little bit or folds, and I usually try to just keep going even with that. Like I find that if I'm sort of careful with it while I'm wrapping this, then the caning won't break all the way and I can still use the piece as is. So here I'm gonna pull it up tight. And so I've come through that. And then I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm holding this fairly snug, a lot of tension. Roll the rock. I'm pinching the caning between my thumb and finger to make sure that it doesn't twist. And then I'm coming back up here and I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna follow this right back around that loop. So I'm gonna get my, oops. I'm gonna pull this, it's gonna come right through there and I'm gonna Okay, so there I've got that. I'm gonna pull it snug and go back up so that essentially I'm making a V shape here. I'm going down and up. Again, holding this with a lot of tension. I'm gonna roll the rock. And I'm going to keep doing this, following this pattern until I'm all the way, until I have as much as I want, like until I'm probably out to about there. So I'm just gonna do this. Here's my little piece that is um, breaking. I'm gonna just try to pull that through smoothly. Once that gets kind of woven in, it'll, it won't matter that it's a little bit of a weaker spot in the caning. It's just gonna be wrapped on here. And my caning's a little bit wet right now, so it's a lot more flexible. Once it dries, then however that broken area lands is going to be, or however it's laying when it dries. Oops. Sometimes you will find that you drop your rock. And the nice thing is that at this stage, it is fairly um, like, you might lose a little bit of tension in whatever you just did, but the whole thing isn't going to just unravel if you drop it or if you lose your place. In fact, I've even set them down and taken a little break in between. And now I think I am making a bigger mess here. All right, I got that straightened out. Especially with this particular pattern, it can be easy to put your leading end through the wrong spot or to get a little bit mixed up. Mine is getting caught on the corner of my table here. All right, so the leading end is going back up through there. I kind of have this place where it's catching. Ah, all right, here's something common that can happen. 
So this is supposed to be going around the back, but I let go of it. And so now it's unraveled a little bit. When that happens, I usually just try to take it and tuck it back around, anchor it again with my finger on the top and pull it through. This one I got a little twisted, so I need to go back and untwist it. All right. I'll do a couple more here just for the sake of demonstration. I'm gonna put my leading end through there. Try to get this so that it's not twisted before it goes through. Rotate the rock. I often have a lot of the caning left over at the end of a wrap and I do that on purpose because it's better to have too much than to run out. So I'd rather use a longer piece than try to guess and measure, but you could certainly try to guess and measure. You could wrap it around your rock a number of times. Um, I would say normally you're going to want at least three yards of material to be working with. You'll need less if your rock is smaller than this and more if your rock is bigger than this, obviously. And Here's that little place where it's catching. I wanna to try to keep working this until that is worked in, because I'd like to show you how you can work those parts in. that piece through there. So I should be catching that piece on this next go around, that little troublesome piece where it was splitting. And that is just gonna get worked right in. I kind of pull this carefully here, pull this, oh, it's splitting a little bit more. Push that through. Okay. Now I've got this piece that's a little troublesome coming apart here. I am just gonna continue around and hmm. actually I'm gonna back up. I've got a different idea for that troublesome piece. You could end your design at any point on the back and not do anything else with this on the front. One thing that I like to do on the front though is I like to wrap kind of um, a little coil around it. And so you can do the coil in a few different ways. If I'm switching colors, I would wrap this around the back, maybe not with the broken end on it, but I would wrap this around the back and I would tuck, um, I would take my awl and I would work this underneath and then I would slide the end, the tail through and pull it tight and that would be finishing up. This one though, especially since I got that little broken piece there, I wanna to try to show you a way to, to work that in. So I'm gonna do a loop where I am just gonna start going around. Instead of going to the back, I'm gonna go under here and pull this through. So this is, I came up and around and instead of going to the back, I'm coming up and I'm gonna pull this through right there. Okay, and then I'm going to, so I've pulled that up through here. I'm gonna go over this, over this part right here, and under this part, and then over this, under this, over this, under, over, under. And I'm just gonna keep going around to make a coil. So over, under, I'm gonna be a little careful with this fragile part that's hanging on here. I'm gonna kinda of 
I'm going to coil this under or thread this under. I'm going to pull this kind of snug. You want a little tension in there. Find the end again. I'm going to go over and under. And I'm going to thread this through again. And here you want to, again, be aware of not twisting your caning. Um, so here, this is my little broken tail, and it's just going to get wrapped underneath of the main cord, uh, the main caning again. So I'm going to pull this under. You want to keep, while you're doing this, I like to keep it so that the rough edge is facing inward. And the um, so this is the smooth edge. And then this is the rough edge. So the rough edge is what is going and facing the middle of the coil. Pull this again, over and under. At this point, if you still have like yards and yards and yards left, um, I'm gonna pull that tight and you see how that, um, the little broken piece just um, settled right in. So anyway, if you have yards and yards left over at this point, um, you could trim this a little bit to make it a little less burdensome to do this coil. I leave probably about a yard there left over. And so here I've got this trimmed. Then I can just quickly go through and do this. Again, I know that I'm going quick, but I'm making sure each pass that the smooth edge is out and that the rough edge is facing into the center. It gets a little easier when you have a shorter piece that you're working with. Also, by this point, my caning feels pretty dry. Um, it still has some moisture in it. It's not perfectly dry, but it's certainly, um, I can feel the difference. It's starting to get a little bit less flexible and a little bit less pliable, which is just fine for this part. But that kind of gives you a sense of how long it stays nice and nice and flexible. I'm sorry, drifting out of the camera. I'm keeping a decent amount of tension on this too. I don't want to pull it so tight that it that the coil um, moves or that the coil is misshapen, but I want it to be, I like it snug. You could also do a pattern um, where you do this a little looser. Like you could have it so that instead of a tight coil, you might do something like that. And so then you wouldn't be pulling it snug. You would just be um, pulling it around to like where to, oops, to about where you wanted it, leaving a little bit of a gap in between each coil. I tend to like to do them tighter because it allows I'm a little bit more confident when I finish it off that the tail end isn't going to come out. And especially since I like leaving these out while I'm hiking, um, they, for me, it just works better to do this a little tighter. As you can see, I'm kind of coming up to the end of my yard that I had left off there. And so that's a pretty good size circle. I want about a foot left over. Maybe you could do a little less. Um, so to finish this off, I'm going to take my, um, my nail or my awl and I'm going to really work it um, underneath of this. I wanna go under all the layers. So I'm gonna kind of push it under. I'm angling it down towards the rock and I can see it coming out on the other side. Sometimes um, this one was pretty easy to get it through. Sometimes it's pretty hard to get it through. Then I'm gonna take, and I've got my tail end here. I'm gonna kind of twist it in my finger so that the rough edge is facing up. This is just my preference. Um, you don't have to do it that way, but I like to twist it so the rough edge is facing up. And then I'm gonna thread this underneath right along side of that metal piece. And so once I get this through, I'm kind of done with the metal piece. 
I can work that out. And then what I have is the smooth side is facing out and then it curves here so that the rough side is facing up. And then I pull this tight and it kind of slipped under a little bit there, but that's okay. Um, then I am going to clip it as close as I can to the edge of the coil. And I might even like try with my awl to tuck that little end under so that it's not very noticeable. And then there you've got it. So the last finishing touch is on the back. You've got this little um, tail hanging out. I usually try to pull this a little bit tighter just to take advantage of the tension and friction here to hold that in place. And then I do the same thing. I cut that off close to the edge and there you've got it um, all done. So um, I hope that this helps and let me know if you have any questions about how to do this.